We are starting our snap and lock panel home much as we would any other frame home. You'll notice that the formwork is set up for a typical monolithic slab pour. If your plan design calls for a full basement or a crawl space, the snap and lock panel system will easily accommodate either. When setting the formwork and pouring the slab, it's a good idea to take a little extra time up front to make sure that the concrete sets level and square. This is especially important around the perimeter of the structure. The snap and lock home package we are building here is a pre-cut kit with dimensions based on the foundation drive. It is important that the foundation be properly dimensioned and that you follow these few simple steps. If you do, the home will go together quickly and you'll eliminate the need for field alterations. As you would in a typical frame home, you want to anchor the walls down to the concrete slab. Anchor bolts are inserted into the wet cement around the perimeter of the slab and along the load-bearing walls. These are set four feet on center. We've pre-marked the locations. Additional anchor bolts are placed at each corner and within 12 inches of each side of the door. We have made sure that the anchor bolts extend approximately an inch and a half above the slab. As an alternative fastening method, an expanding concrete anchor may be used. This is good for making changes after the concrete has been poured. Now that the concrete is set, we will now install the base channel. You'll notice we're starting with a good clean surface. This is necessary for the foam sealant to adhere well. The chalk lines have been snapped for all the exterior and interior bearing walls. We've measured and pre-cut all the base channel, cutting the corners at a 45 degree angle. Anchor bolt locations have been pre-drilled down the length of the channel with a 5 8 inch drill bit. It's a good idea to set the base channel down dry to check your bolt alignment before you place the sealant. A bead of expanding foam sealant is applied to the slab. While the foam is still wet, carefully place the channel over the bolts and align it with the chalk line. The bolts are then secured in place. We are now ready for the walls to go up. Since all panels are pre-numbered and cut to exact lengths, we'll want to refer to the installation guidelines for the proper panel sequence. We will be starting our installation at the corner furthest away from the pile of panels. The first panel should be on the top of the stack and pre-mitered at a 45 degree angle on the corner side. The panel is inserted into the channel with the mitered side closest to the corner. It is important that the panel be plumb in both directions. If the panel is out of plumb, you need to first anchor the high side of the channel to the panel. The low end is then lifted with a flat bar until plumb and anchored on both sides of the channel. To make sure that the rest of the wall panels go in easily, it is imperative that the first panel is installed plumb and true. The adjacent corner panel is installed in the same fashion. Before installing any more wall panels, we'll want to cover the inside and outside corner connection. Two by two angle is cut at the appropriate height and secured to the outside and inside corners. Once again, we should check to make sure that the panels are plumb. If everything has been done right, the next panel should go in like a snap, and I mean that quite literally. 
The snap and lock panels have a unique joint design that adds strength to the panel and simply snaps together. The next sequential panel is placed in the base channel and slid just alongside the corner panel. A quick, sharp push is applied to the panel. It snaps and locks into place. Before moving on to the next panel, the panel needs to be anchored at the base track. All the remaining wall panels are installed the same way. Periodically check the panels to make sure they're running plumb and make adjustments as necessary. Sometimes when dealing with longer panels, sections of the seam may not snap all the way in. This is easy to correct. A three or four foot two by four is placed on the edge of the panel in the center of the foam and then struck with a big hammer or a small sledge. The panels snap right together with minimal effort. After 24 foot of wall panel is in place, we can begin to install the pitch top cap. Top channel is mitered at the corner and the splice is staggered with the panel joints. At this time, we will be securing the top channel with just enough screws to keep it from moving around. This allows the top cap to be pulled up tight to the roof, closing any air spaces. Remaining screws will be attached during the roof installation. Now that we're at the next corner, we'll need to check the dimension of the last panel. It may need to be trimmed in the field. Before installing this last piece of top cap, I want to point out the continuous foam interface. The gaps have been virtually eliminated within the wall, reducing air infiltration. This dramatically improves the energy efficiency of the house. Insulation also remains rigid and won't sag over time like bat insulation. The next step is to install the light gauge interior steel bearing walls and beams. Before we can go any further, chalk lines are struck as guides to align the roof panels. Well, we're ready to do the roof installation. The first panel is turned over so that the bottom faces up. A pencil is used to mark the roof overhang dimension on the female end. We will be installing the first panel at the gable end of the house. The top edge of the panel needs to be aligned even with the chalk line. Rake overhang marks are then aligned with the top of the wall channel. Now that the panel is in the proper position, we can secure it in place. Number 10 drill point screws are inserted into a neoprene back washer. They are then hammered through the panel. Additional screws are driven into the top edge of the roof into the bearing walls or beams. Screws are tightened down until the face of the panel dimples. This will keep water from penetrating these areas. The screws closest to the male end are left untightened. In order for the panel to snap properly, the panel must be free on the male side. Just prior to installing the next panel, the sealant reservoir is filled with a bead of approved sealant. The panel is then placed alongside the previous panel in line with the chalk lines. Panels are snapped together quickly and easily. Notice that the patented connection design has hidden the sealant within the panel. This protects it from ultraviolet destruction and forms a waterproof seal. 
The panels must be fastened in place before going any further. As we proceed, notice that the wall top cap draws up tight to the underside of the roof panels, accommodating for any slight wall variations. As this occurs, the remaining interior top cap screws can be installed. As we get to the end of the roof, it may be necessary to cut the last panel to make sure that the overhang is consistent with the other end of the roof. When all roof panels are secured in place, the fascia trim can be installed. All corners are mired at a 45 degree angle. A thin putty knife will facilitate the installation if the fit is tight. Tech screws are used to attach the top and bottom of the fascia trim. The final step of the roof installation is to install the ridge cap. A bead of sealant is placed under both edges of the roof cap. The top cap is then centered over the peak of the roof and secured with tech screws. The next piece of ridge cap should overlap at least six inches. Continue this until you get to the end of the roof. The shell construction is now complete. We are enclosing it now by installing all the windows and doors. You'll notice that we have opted to have the window openings pre-cut to save time in the field. Thermal brake receiving channel has been provided to trim out the openings. We begin by measuring the width and the height, then cutting our pieces to size. The channel is mired at a 45 degree angle at each end and then fit into the opening. The last piece will have to be slightly flared so that it will fit properly. Once in place, you should check to see if the channel is plumb and level. Tech screws are then secured to the inside and outside of the channel. Windows, doors, and skylights are installed the same way you would in a typical frame home. Once in place, tech screws are used to secure the window. A self-stick tape is applied to the window flange to ensure an energy tight seal. Any odd shaped openings should be cut in the field after the door or window arrives on the job site. In the case of this window, the factory has pre-cut an opening to match the window dimensions excluding the radius. The window was placed partially in the opening and the radius was used as a pattern and a pencil line was marked on the skin. The opening is then cut slightly outside the mark to allow for the channel thickness. When framing the radius, the front and back of the channel are cut every two inches, allowing it to bend. We can now move inside the home to finish a few interior details. We've started by installing the remainder of our walls and beams. If your plan calls for ceiling drops or soffits, it can be simply accomplished by attaching light gauge framing to the underside of the panel. 7 8 inch 26 gauge steel high hat channel is used to fur out the inside of the wall panels creating a raceway for Romex wiring. Electric wiring is run through pre-punched holes in interior stud walls. After all the electrical wiring and plumbing is complete, drywall and other finishing materials are installed in the same fashion as a wood frame home. 
A number of exterior finishes can be applied directly to the snap and lock insulated panel. Vinyl siding is installed in a conventional manner utilizing number 8 by 9 16 wafer head screws. Brick veneer ties are anchored with screws directly through the steel skins. Conventional wire lath can be screwed to the panel or a synthetic stucco can be applied directly to the steel skins. A wood base can be screwed directly to the roof panels for applying various roofing materials like shingles. Asphalt shingles may also be applied directly to the panels with wafer head screws. Metal roofing can also be screwed directly to the panel skin. With all these options, architects and homeowners have a great deal of latitude in their designs. Our home is now finished and ready for occupancy. This will make a wise investment for some quality conscious home buyer. A number of other pre-existing floor plans are available. Our in-house design staff can also create custom plans or adapt the snap and lock insulated panels to your own designs. Call 800-969-3706 to get more details about this innovative building envelope.